So we're first going to talk about some basic features of the renal system. <clears throat> we'll talk about a little bit about the anatomy, the function of the kidneys, um, and the primary role of kidneys in, in terms of being a, a filtering organ and producing urine, and just sort of an overview of urine production. So um, the term renal um, actually means uh, sort of related to the kidneys. So anything related to the kidneys we're referred to as renal. And the kidneys are part of the urinary sy uh, system. So there's really two sets of organs. The organs that form urine, which, is, uh, which are the kidneys, and the organs that store urine and carry urine out of the body. Um, so that includes the um, ureters that bring um, urine from the kidneys to the bladder, where um, urine is then stored, and then the urethra, which carries urine from the bladder um, outside of the body when we void. So the kidneys themselves um, are urine-forming organs. That is really their primary function. Um, and by forming urine, they are um, acting as one of our major filtering organs in our body, meaning that they take blood, they filter blood, and they remove um, waste, they remove excess fluid, excess um, electrolytes, and allow all of that um, excess stuff and waste, allow it to be removed from the body. In addition to all of the waste, um, the kidneys are also the primary route of elimination for nearly all the drugs that we take um, for various reasons. So the kidneys, <clears throat> by forming urine, they are acting as our major filtering organ. So the kidneys, not surprisingly, receive a pretty healthy percentage of cardiac output that has a high renal blood flow um, during all times. So the kidneys receive blood um, by the uh, what's called the renal artery which branches off of the abdominal aorta. Okay, so blood flows into the kidneys from the renal artery. The, that blood gets filtered by the kidneys Okay. And then the blood leaves the, this newly filtered blood leaves the kidneys through the renal vein, which then merges and drains into the abdominal vena cava, okay. which is then going to move back to the heart. That blood's moving back to the heart and it's going to get um, uh, passed on to the lungs and on, then back on to the rest of the body. Okay. Now the kidneys play many, many functions besides um, filtering blood besides forming urine. Uh, but the, the focus of our conversation for kidney function is in its function to produce urine. Okay, and if you noticed over here, um, the blood came in, got filtered, and came out, but the product of the filtration, the urine, moves out of the kidney down to the ureter and then gets stored in the urinary bladder okay, until we want to void. Um, and then the urine moves from the urinary bladder into the urethra and exits the body. Okay. Now we have two kidneys on either side. Okay. And if we take a closer look, each kidney is, as you <clears throat> might expect, is kidney shaped, meaning it's sort of shaped like a kidney bean. And if you um, are looking at so this picture, what we're looking at is actually a cross section of the kidney. Um, and what we notice is that there are sort of two visual zones of the, of the kidney. There's this outer region, which is lighter in color. Okay? And this outer region we call the renal cortex. And then we have this inner region of the kidney um, that is darker in color that we call the renal medulla. Okay? So we have the outer cortex and the inner medulla. And then at the very center of this kidney we have what's called the renal pelvis. And the renal pelvis is where urine is collecting and then eventually exiting out of the kidneys through the ureter. So if you look at the cartoon version of this kidney, um, you see a little bit more detail you see 
the outer cortex, you see the inner medulla, and the inner medulla contains these areas called renal pyramids. And um, you can see that these renal pyramids are composed of something, right, that looks like almost like a set of tubules, and that's exactly what they are, where urine is sort of collecting and draining into the renal pelvis. So urine is formed within the cortex and medulla, and then it drains into this renal pelvis and then out of the kidneys through the ureter. So <clears throat> the kidneys are filtering organs, as I mentioned. They are also endocrine structures. So the kidneys also produce hormones, and one of the most important hormones that the kidneys produce is a hormone called erythropoietin otherwise known as EPO. Okay? And erythropoietin, or EPO, is a hormone that acts on the bone marrow and it stimulates red blood cell production. Okay? So erythropoietin produced by the kidneys is essential for maintaining normal red blood cell um, uh, concentration in the blood. The kidneys are also metabolic organs, and among other things, um, one, of the, one of the metabolic functions of the kidneys is to um, carry out what we call gluconeogenesis, which is the production of new glucose um, from uh, substrates such as lactic acid and amino acids. Now, we've talked about gluconeogenesis being something that, that the, the liver does, right, in helping to maintain um, blood glucose levels, but the kidneys contribute to that as well. Okay. And so the focus of our conversation for the kidneys is really in um, its function to filter the blood, okay? produce urine, filter the blood, and as a result of that filtering and that urine production, it, the kidneys also regulate the levels of electrolytes in our body, regulates plasma volume, regulates plasma osmolarity, and so we'll talk about um, how that happens. So each kidney is composed of these functional units called nephrons. Now a nephron is the smallest functional unit in the kidney, meaning it's the smallest unit um, within the kidney that, that actually individually produces urine. Okay. Now we have about a million, function, million uh, nephrons per kidney and we're, we're born with about a million nephrons per kidney. And each of these nephrons contain um, a vascular component, meaning that there are blood vessels associated with each nephron, and a tubular component, which is the actual um, tubule where urine is being formed. Okay. So if we look over here, what we're seeing is actually a um, kind of idealized cartoon representation of sort of a, an, a, a, um, the average nephron. Okay. Now, the parts of this nephron that are colored in yellow are the tubular components of the nephron. Okay. Now, the parts of this uh, picture that are um, colored in red, blue, and purple are the vascular components. So let's first talk about the tubular components. And let's start at the center here. So if you notice here, there is this, um, if you can just ignore for a second this um, blue dotted circle that is um, highlighting a particular area of the nephron. And just look at the sort of claw-shaped um, yellow structure. This area is called the Bowman's capsule, okay? This area is called Bowman's capsule. And you notice this Bowman's capsule is wrapped around this tuft of capillaries called the glomerulus, okay? So the capillaries are vasculature, right? They are blood vessels, like all other capillaries in our body. And what surrounds it is the tubular portion, the Bowman's capsule. Now, this really is where urine formation begins because some of the plasma within the glomerular 
capillaries is going to get filtered across a membrane and enter Bowman's capsule. Okay, so this is really where urine begins. So fluid moves into Bowman's capsule and then from there it starts to move down this tubule. So from the glomerular, from the Bowman's capsule <clears throat> following the yellow component, we get to the next portion of the nephron that we call the proximal tubule. And the proximal tubule, it's called proximal because it's proximal or close to the glomerulus or the Bowman's capsule. Okay? So the first portion of the nephron after Bowman's capsule is the proximal tubule. So then fluid continues to move through until it gets to this um, part of the nephron that we call the loop of Henle. Okay. So fluid moves down the what we call the descending um, arm of the loop of Henle and then it moves up the ascending arm of the loop of Henle. So the loop of Henle is the entire structure, and it has a descending arm and an ascending arm. Okay. So then fluid from the loop of Henle moves ultimately into uh, what's called the distal tubule. Okay. And then finally, um, the distal tubule drains urine into uh, the what's called the collecting duct. And every um, collecting duct... Uh, it is physically attached to about eight to ten nephrons. Okay, so this distal tubule is draining into a collecting duct that it shares with about eight to ten nephrons. And if you look up at the, <clears throat> if we look back at the renal pelvis, this, um, excuse me, the renal pyramid, this pyramid structure is actually a, an area where it, you have many of these collecting ducts draining urine right into the renal pelvis okay. so and then from the collecting duct the urine moves into the renal pelvis and then onto the ureter so that's the tubular component the vascular component as I said begins with this glomerulus okay actually the vascular component begins um, back at this branch of sorry, this branch of the renal artery, okay? So blood moves into the kidneys and it then um, starts to get distributed throughout the kidneys and uh, through these smaller branches of the renal artery, okay? Until finally you get to the smallest branch of the renal artery that then leads to a small vessel that we call the afferent arteriole. Okay. So the afferent arteriole delivers blood from the renal artery to the glomerulus. Okay. Now at the glomerular capillaries, at the glomerulus, you're going to get sort of this first stage of urine production that we call glomerular filtration. And we'll talk more about glomerular filtration, but this is where um, a certain percentage of the plasma of the fluid actually moves from the glomerulus into Bowman's capsule. Okay. And the glomerular capillaries are specially designed to allow this movement of fluid and in the, it's also specially designed to retain all of the cells and all of the plasma proteins. So the fluid that the plasma that moves from the glomerulus into Bowman's capsule is free of cells and it's free of plasma, but it's basically identical in identical in composition to plasma minus that. So the rest of the blood that doesn't get filtered, right, moves from the glomerulus onto what's called the efferent arteriole. Okay. So blood moves into the glomerulus through the afferent arteriole. Blood moves away from the glomerulus through the efferent arteriole. And the efferent arteriole um, passes blood onto a network of capillaries called the peritubular capillaries. 
And the peritubular capillaries is represented in this slide as the purple netting that you see surrounding the rest of the nephron. Okay, So this purple netting is surrounding the rest of the nephron. Now, just like every other capillary, capillaries are designed for exchange, right? So um, this netting wraps around the rest of the nephron because the composition of the urine that's moving through this tubule is getting adjusted by the movement of substances back and forth from the peritubular capillaries to the tubule, to the nephron, and from the nephron to the peritubular capillaries. Okay, and we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll um, explain that, I'll explain that a little bit further a little bit later. Okay, now the blood, after it's being, it's finished being filtered, be completely exchanging with the tubule, the peritubular capillaries drains then blood into a tiny branch of the renal vein, which then um, merges into the large renal vein, which then drains into the vena cava. Okay. Now, this blue circle, dotted circle that I had you ignore earlier, um, it's, it is surrounding a, an area of the nephron that is very important for regulating kidney function. So this little area is called the juxtaglomerular apparatus juxtaglomerular meaning right next to the glomerulus okay and what's important about this um, area of the nephron as I said it's a regulatory structure and if you notice a portion of the distal tubule here is um, sitting very close to the area where the afferent arterial and the efferent arterial invaginate right and forms sort of a V, and the distal tubule is sitting right at the center of that V. Okay, so that is um, an area, a special portion of every nephron in, in the kidneys that um, serves very important regulatory function. And we'll talk about that um, a little later. One of the most important things that regulates is the rate of um, filtration here at the glomerulus. Now, there are two basic types of nephrons, and I'm, and I'm simplifying things here, but there are two basic types of nephrons that you'll encounter in the kidneys. Um, there are what are called superficial cortical nephrons and juxtamedullary nephrons. Now, the as it's described, superficial cortical nephrons, this, it, it's called, those nephrons are called superficial cortical because the glomeruli, right, the glomerular capillaries of these nephrons are sitting very superficially in the outer cortex, right? So right at the edge of the outer edge of the kidney. And then for the juxtamedullary nephrons, their glomeruli are sitting juxtamedullary, meaning very very deep within the cortex, um, right next to the medulla. So if we look here, this sort of is a cartoon representation of these two types of nephrons. We've got our superficial cortical nephrons um, over here and our juxtamedullary nephrons here. So notice that um, the glomeruli of all of these types of nephrons, all of them are in the cortex, right? You only find glomeruli in the cortex of the kidney. Okay? You don't see glomeruli in the, in the medulla. But for these juxtamedullary nephrons, their glomeruli are sitting very deep within the cortex um, near the boundary with the medulla. While the cortical and superficial nephrons are their glomeruli are sitting close to the outer edge. Okay. Now that's not the only anatomical difference between these two um, nephrons. The other anatomical difference is in the, the length of their loops of Henle. So these cortical nephrons, superficial nephrons, have very short loops of Henle. Okay. 
very short loops of Henle. And the loops of Henle only extend into the upper portion of the medulla. Okay. On the other hand, these juxtamedullary nephrons have very long loops of Henle, and their loops of Henle will span the entire depth of the medulla. Okay. So that the tip of the loop of Henle is right next to the renal pelvis. Okay. And this is very important because not only are these two nephrons different in terms of some of their structural features, they're very different in terms of their function within the, nef within the kidney. So <clears throat> cortical nephrons, short loops of Henle, juxtamedullary nephrons, long loops of Henle. The third anatomical difference between these two um, nephrons is in the vascular component associated with their loops of Henle. Okay. So if you notice up here when I was talking about the peritubular capillaries, peritubular capillaries are wrapped around the entire uh, nephron tubule. Okay. Now that is correct for the, oops, sorry, that is correct for the cortical nephrons. Okay. Peritubular capillaries wrapped around the entire nephron tubule. However, for the juxtamedullary nephrons, okay, you notice that the efferent arteriole comes off here and it stays as a single loop as it runs parallel to the loop of Henle. Okay. And then as this blood vessel moves out of the medulla, it will form peritubular capillaries that wrap around the rest of the nephron. But for the juxtamedullary nephron, the vascular component that parallels the loop of Henle is a single vessel that we call the vasorecta. Okay, so that's the third structural difference. So three structural differences between these two nephrons. The position of their glomeruli, number one. The length of the loop of Henle, number two. And then number three is the juxtamedullary nephrons have a vasorecta. Okay, that's the number three. Now functionally, the difference between these two nephrons okay, is that the juxtamedullary nephrons, and we'll, we'll understand this better later, but the juxtamedullary nephrons are extremely important for the ability for a kidney to conserve water. Okay? So the juxtamedullary nephrons are going to be responsible for allowing this kidney to produce urine at certain times that's very concentrated, okay, so that we are conserving as much water as we possibly can. Okay. So what you'll find if we think about that function of the juxtamedullary nephrons, if you look at different species of animals, animals that live in very dry climates, right, where water conservation is very, very important, those animals will have a larger percentage of juxtamedullary nephrons in their kidneys compared to animals that don't live in the same conditions. Okay, so for humans, about 20% of our nephrons are juxtamedullary nephrons. Okay, so about 20% are juxtamedullary. Okay, and the other 80% are cortical. But you can imagine if you're a camel in the desert, you know, you might actually get to the point where at 100% of your nephrons are juxtamedullary because the requirement for water conservation is so great. Okay. So we'll come back to these nephrons um, later when we actually talk about um, conserving water, the mechanism for conserving water. Okay, so... The basic function of the kidney is to produce urine, and urine production is accomplished 
through three basic processes. Okay? The three basic processes for urine formation is um, represented here by these circles with initials inside, abbreviations inside. So this first circle, GF, stands for glomerular filtration. The next circle, TR, stands for tubular reabsorption. And TS stands for tubular secretion. So what we're looking at here is sort of a cartoon representation of the nephron where um, the, the Bowman's capsule and all of the rest of the tubule, proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, collecting duct, is represented by just a straight yellow tube. Okay, And then the vascular component is represented by the afferent arterial up here. Okay, is just a straight tube leading to the glomerular capillaries, which is this bulbous part, the efferent arterial, okay, over here, and then finally just a straight tube representing the peritubular capillaries. Okay. So blood comes into the nephron through the afferent arterial and then into the glomerular capillaries. Okay. And this is where we have the first stage of urine production, which is glomerular filtration. Okay. About 20% of the plasma that enters the glomerular capillaries is going to get filtered into Bowman's capsule. 20% okay. of the plasma that enters glomerular, the glomerulus gets filtered through glomerular filtration into the Bowman's capsule. The other 80% of plasma in the rest of the blood moves on to the efferent arterioles and onto the peritubular capillaries. Okay. So the 20%, this fluid here, the 20% that got filtered, starts to move down the tubule. And it, within the tubule, between the tubule and the peritubular capillaries, there's now an opportunity for exchange. So when fluid or substances move from the tubule back to the capillary, to the blood, we call that tubular reabsorption. Okay? So we filtered something that we want to take back. Okay? That's tubular reabsorption. There's also an opportunity for substances to move from the capillaries, peritubular capillaries, to the tubule, and that's called tubular secretion. So this is likely something that didn't get filtered, okay, that we want to actually add to the contents of urine. Okay. So tubular reabsorption, we're actually taking something back that we filtered and tubular secretion, we are adding something to urine that we didn't originally filter. Okay. Now, at, when all of tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion is said and done, we are left with some set composition of, plasma, of urine excuse me, that then gets eliminated from the body. Okay. So the... So the process of producing this urine, right, this urine that's being produced is entirely originating as plasma in the afferent arterial. Okay? And the process of setting the composition of this urine is done through these three steps, glomerular filtration, reabsorption, taking some stuff back, and secretion, adding some things that didn't get filtered. And we're going to go through and um, talk about each of these processes in greater detail.